Um, I did want to say up front that we, we did have a subtitle to our presentation which uh, hasn't made its way onto the, the conference program, which was called Recent Developments in Understanding the Serious and Organised Crime Threat in the Australian Context. And that basically means that the three papers this afternoon are all about methodologies. So I thought I'd mention that up front for the uh, interests of your sanity. If you're a bit methodologied out, um, then perhaps there's some sessions in some of the other concurrent rooms, perhaps the corruption one, which might be more juicy for you. So I just wanted to warn you about that as, as, as a starting point. Um, I'm facilitating the session for the next hour and in a moment I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the uh, functions of the Crime Commission just to set some context for the three presentations that you'll hear. We have three speakers, uh, Mr Shane Nilsson, Ms Jane Anir and Mr Damien Voltz, uh, all members of the Australian Crime Commission. Uh, and all experts in their respective fields. Each of their presentations will go for about 15 minutes. There should be time at the end of each presentation for some questions and probably also time at the end of the session. So by way of background and for the benefit particularly of international guests who might not be familiar with the Crime Commission, uh, the Australian Crime Commission is a Commonwealth Government agency with a focus on addressing nationally significant and serious and organised crime. The goal of our agency is to reduce harm to the community caused by the activities of serious and organised crime. Functionally, we have both criminal intelligence functions and traditional policing and investigative functions. Importantly, we have coercive powers which enables the gathering of intelligence by witnesses under oath, uh, and that's a particular tool in our capability set. We focus on both known and unknown threats. We monitor and assess all crime markets in which serious and organised crime has a footprint or impact on Australia. We assess the emerging environment uh, and we build uh, a deep understanding of what we'd like to think is a deep understanding of the nature and impact of the serious and organised crime threat. Our work translates into intelligence flows and products to our partner agency, which comprises the Australian law enforcement community, uh, the national security community in Canberra, uh, and a number of policy agencies as well. We also develop target development packages, which are particularly relevant to law enforcement agencies and which we partner up in terms of traditional law enforcement and disruption activities. The illicit drug market is a particular focus of our efforts given the predominance of the profits that this market makes in Australia for serious and organised crime. But in addition, we have a focus on other criminal activities such as revenue fraud and Project Wickenby is probably the, the most obvious uh, project that you will have read, uh, read a lot about in terms of the media coverage. Um, other sorts of fraud, cyber fraud, people trafficking and a lot of enabling activity such as money laundering, identity crime, corruption, they're all areas of focus for us both in terms of our intelligence assessment work and our disruptive work. So our focus is on understanding the environment, it's on detecting, disrupting and dismantling the highest uh, threats. Um, and it's also particularly about trying to make the operating environment more hostile for criminal activity. And um, that's where we have a very important focus on engaging with policy agencies and other regulators to try and work out what mechanisms can be put in place in terms of um, making that uh, environment hostile for their operations. In recent times, the Crime Commission has been undergoing change to enhance our ability to detect and address the serious and organised crime threat. Um, and the paper that you uh, heard from my colleague Dr Lacey this morning in relation to the Fusion Centre is one of our key means through which we're trying to improve our ability to detect unknown threats and it's a major area of focus for us at the moment. So it's in this context I'm pleased to present to you three subject matter experts from the ACC. Their bios are in your conference program so I'm not going to go through those in detail. All three papers are geared around initiatives which are all aimed at improving our ability to effectively address this threat. In particular, these improvements relate to our ability to better understand the nature and extent of crime markets, including demand and supply drivers, how supply chains are shifting and operating, the roles of those involved in the markets, including facilitators, 
and the roles that they're playing, and to understand more about what makes serious and organised crime groups resilient to law enforcement and other strategies. The common thread to the, these three topics of market threat assessment, target threat assessment and criminal, criminal resilience is a focus on the use of risk management principles to better address and mitigate the risk posed by serious and organised crime. In the first two papers, risk management is being applied at two distinct levels. The first level being the operation of the markets, or what we call the what, um, and the second level is the assessment of the targets and what we call the who. Both of these pictures together inform our understanding of the risk picture. The third paper focuses on understanding the resilience of an organised crime groups with a view to developing more effective strategies to disrupt these groups in the long term. So there's a strong focus on effective management of the risk, either through improved understanding and assessment of the risk or improved response to the risk. So that's a very short uh, context setting for you. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Mr Shane Nielsen. Shane is the head of our strategic intelligence team in the Australian Crime Commission and responsible for assessing and authoring our major threat assessments. And he's going to present a paper to you on crime market assessments. So thank you very much. Okay. The Australian Crime Commission produces a biennial organised crime threat assessment, the OCTA, the most recent one of which was published earlier this year. The OCTA assesses the relative risk posed by a range of illicit markets and enabler activities. In my presentation today, I will A, explain what the OCTA provides, B, summarise why the ACC thinks it important to produce a market-based assessment, and C, consider whether there is benefit in consolidating assessments of crime markets and crime groups into a single assessment. To the OCTA itself. The OCTA is an assessment of the impact of serious and organised crime on the Australian community, underpinned by a risk assessment methodology involving both a threat and harms assessment process, which is consistent with the relevant international standard. The OCTA assesses a series of organised crime markets, for example, cocaine, methylamphetamines, investment fraud, high-tech crime, etc., etc., and also enabler activities such as money laundering, identity crime, and the criminal exploitation of business structures. The OCTA methodology permits stakeholders to develop an understanding of each risk, i.e. the respective illicit market and enablers, its consequences, the harms assessment, and the likelihood of those consequences, the threat assessment. The OCTA commences with a summary of the broader international and domestic context within which organised crime occurs. Intelligence gaps, where they exist, are noted throughout the OCTA to provide an understanding of the level of confidence with which assessments are being made and to guide future law enforcement collection activity. The risk posed by each respective crime market and enabler is prioritised and the OCTA informs the development of options to treat the highest risk markets and enablers. The aim is not to eliminate risk but to reduce the residual risk, i.e. the risk after treatment, to a tolerable level. Input by stakeholders is taken into account in determining which crime markets and enabler activities to assess and the appropriate threat and harm levels. In the case of threat levels, the analysis includes consideration of the nature and effectiveness of existing controls which impact on the market or enabler. The harms assessment considers the political, economic and social impact on the Australian community of the particular illicit market or enabler and the extent to which the relevant activity facilitates or complements the categories of criminal activity. It is recognised that a significant proportion of serious and organised crime involves interrelated criminal activity. The OCTA deals with this by, in the threat analysis, specifying with as much precision as possible the characteristics and drivers of individual crime markets and in the corresponding harms analysis, 
noting where one category of criminal activity is related to or facilitates another and adjusting the harm level accordingly. The ultimate manifestation of this approach is the enabler activities which facilitate many categories of crime. The OCTA feeds into the Commonwealth Organised Crime Strategic Framework and risks assessed as critical in the OCTA form the basis of the Commonwealth Organised Crime Response Plan. I'd like to turn now to the question of why the ACC believes it important to produce a market-based assessment. The international literature consistently emphasises the importance of market-based assessments from the perspective of better understanding organised criminal activity and also more effectively disrupting organised crime. During the early 2000s, researchers at Ghent University critiqued risk-based methodologies in order to identify a method for determining the impact of organised crime in Belgium. They concluded that differences in the dynamics of illicit markets established the primary context for illicit entrepreneurs and that organised crime is a function of the markets for illicit goods and services. Organised crime groups were seen as being predominantly dynamic, fluid, adaptable and flexible, capable of responding to both market requirements and changes in the external environment. Professor Tom van der Beeken from Ghent University suggested in a 2004 article that the risk posed by a particular illicit market could be identified through an analysis of issues such as product quantity and quality, price changes and price levels, product innovation, convergence with other markets and the impact of regulators. Similarly, Professor J. Albanese of Victoria Commonwealth University in Richmond wrote in 2008 that organised crime groups operate enterprises to survive and make a profit while controlling the premises, the pressures, I'm sorry, they face from suppliers, customers, regulators and competitors. He saw the key issues as being the nature of supply, i.e. the availability and ease of movement of commodities, demand, both the level of demand and whether it is elastic or inelastic, competition, profitability, the history of organised crime in the market, the impact of associated harms, and regulators, ease of entry into the market, regulations, the capacity and effectiveness of law enforcement, and local corruption levels. A useful market-based assessment can be derived from merging the criteria of Van der Beeken and Albanese. According to Howard Abedinsky of St John's University, New York, and I quote, the successful dislodging of any organised fi crime figure, no matter how high, does not reduce the market for goods and services. Similarly, Albanese argued that successful prosecutions of organised crime figures affect groups for only a short period because the customer demand for the illegal products or services is not diminished by a prosecution. So existing or new groups continue to exploit these illicit markets. He added that even markets with no prior history of organised crime can be identified through a market-based analysis, providing information for investigators beyond what might be obtained from targeting assessments to those individuals and groups with known ties to organised crime.